Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is May the 22nd, 2019, and we're going to talk about three tickers today, and Miss Vegas is going to give us our watch list. Yeah, so you know what, guys? I'm going to keep it nice and short because a lot of people are off, long weekends coming, so, um, you know, just want to keep it short and simple for one more trading day tomorrow if you're planning to trade. Um, so I want to talk about Tesla... I want to talk about Cron, and I want to talk about OBLN and the news they had. So let's get started. So Tesla, well, can I just tell you, I just cannot believe what is happening on this stock. I mean, every single day, you know, either a tweet from Elon Musk or something's going on. And, you know, we see that um, one of the analysts out there did say earlier this week, you know, Tesla Q. And, uh, you know, everyone's making fun of Tesla, actually. And, and they even said, you know what, Tesla's price target, they said it's going to $10. Oh. So, I mean, they're really, really, really bashing the stock. But you know what? Do you blame them? I mean, think about this. All these people that have Tesla, that love Tesla, love the car. I mean, fine, you could love the product. But at the end of the day, they're not selling cars. The company is losing money. And um, you know what? At the end of the day, all these shareholders that keep hoping and praying, you know what, they're losing money too. And, um, you know, maybe if this stock goes lower and lower and lower, eventually might become a strong buy if in fact there's some positive news. But right now, I mean, I don't even know how to like, how to, how this trade's going because there's days where the stock pulls back and then like yesterday it ran up $10 and then it reversed also. And then today, uh, the previous close yesterday was 20508. The stock opened up at 199.10 at the market open. I'm talking about 930. And then the low of the day today was 191.71. And you know what? That's where Tesla is right now as we speak. So you know what? This is a really super volatile stock. Whoever bought yesterday the stock yesterday, even if they bought it after hours, um, the stock ran just a little because there was like, um, Elon Musk exercised his options, by the way. Um, so that happened and, uh, obviously, um, the stocks pulled back. So a lot of people really, really, really shorting the stock. And you know what? I don't blame them. That's what you got to do right now with the stock because it's an opportunity to make money on the way down. And I guess I'll turn it over to Jim to tell us his thoughts on Tesla and what you foresee next, because it's probably going to pull back for some time. Well, I don't know. Uh, I'm shocked. I really am. This has been one of my favorite trades of, of at least a two year period. We do have a three year chart up here, which has a yearly low of 178.19. So that's where I'm going to put my target at. I'm going to put it at really actually about 181.12 for my first solid support if it pulls back another day 181.12 and i think we can bounce up and start creating new resistances from there but also you could possibly if you know if people get on the train it can go back down to a dollar fifty so i'm going to pull up i've been watching this from day one i'm going to pull this up to a five year and see what a five year chart looks like and then i'm going to make this a month so on a five-year chart, we did bring this down one time, and I remember this day when it was down here at 141.05. So, you know, and then I've got my other support level here between 181.12. So I'm going to see if I can change this five-year date to a different. We've got a week. Let's change it to four days and see what I can get out of it. So I'm going to look for some more supports. we got one right here at 157.94, 156. And I see another one right here, right around the 171.29. And then I got a low support right down here, right around the 167.02. And a double bottom support right here at 176.09. So those are my supports that I'm going to go off of. Now let's bring this back to a yearly and see if I can see some supports. Barely. I mean, they kind of shrub the base here. We're going to put one right here. Let me magnify this up. 
So these are the four supports that I'm looking at right now, or at least the three. The 190.75, which would come real close to hitting today. The 181.12, and then the 176.09. And on your own free will, pull up, and you can stop and pause this video if you like. And I'm going to bring this back to the five-year, which I think will show up here on the three-year. Let me pull this up one more time where you can pause this video and write down these resistance levels. And then I'm magnify it up a little bit. You can barely see them down here, but we go to a low of 167.02, 171, 176, and 181. But if I unmagnify it, you got that low support right there at 157.94 and 142.42. Then I'm going to draw another one right here at 150, which is I had a target at 150 if this selling keeps coming back. That's going to be my low support. You can stop these at any time if you like and rock, jot, jot these down. So we've got the 181.12. That's going to be your first little support level. First we're going to hit this 190.75. And that's basically, I'm just surprised. I, I'm not going to believe $10 a share. It's just too far gone, too far out there. In fact, it's kind of hilarious. It's not going to go down that low at all. 140 at the lowest is my book, is my value. 140, 141, I can see that happening. Maybe a 5% a chance. 150 is probably about a 30% chance. 180, it's going to be probably about an 80% uh, chance. And that's going to be Tesla. Next one we're going to talk about is going to be Cron. Yeah, so you know what? We talked about Cron not too long ago. And uh, the reason I had brought it up back then was I did mention about, you know, that news that they were connected with Medifarm Labs, right? And yep. Medifarm Labs um, is, uh, you know, they have a relationship with Kronos because Medifarm Lab is going to supply Kronos with $30 million of cannabis concentrate over the next 18 months and they actually had signed a multi-year supply agreement and the supply deal could actually go up to 60 million over the next two years um subject to certain renewal and purchasing options not options of the stock but like options of like you know uh, the option to purchase more cannabis uh, uh from them and and additionally under a separate two-year tolling agreement chronos agreed that they selected many farm uh, located by the way in barrie ontario as its preferred partner to fulfill certain of its processing needs. So I think this is a really good arrangement. Um, so the reason we liked Kronos, I mean, we did watch it yesterday. We didn't do a market report yesterday, but we did kind of spot the breakout yesterday at around 1540 and said that this would be a really good swing trade. So we did alert this stock earlier today um and i did alert this trade as a swing trade um in the morning you know to go long on the stock as long as the chest support would hold but you know what i took it from the option side we actually grabbed the 16 dollar option calls uh with a strike of friday the 24th but i did tell everyone this is a day trade this is not you know swing and keep cron into the until tomorrow because i was just wanting to trade the option from the chart action and you know what we got those at uh 29 cents some people got filled at 30 and 31 but you know what this one is high as 68 cents so this was a 100 percent option trade and so congrats to the ones that got it but still i do like cron um as a future longer term hold uh, because of the things they have lined up but you know what jim what are your thoughts on this chart at the moment based on how it's closed and how it's looking well, i'm looking at the volume today on the option at 1650 and and we're down here at 15 cents so this would be maybe one i'd want to look at tomorrow uh, maybe not in the 24th but i'd probably have to go to a different date but cron itself yeah, you might have to go like a week out like maybe yeah. may 3rd yeah but um let me pull up the chart here. Now, I was shocked when the earnings came out. And we did have a nice little bounce on it, and then it pulled back all the way to $14. And I brought this to Miss Vegas's attention. 
I had a little lower price. I thought we could see the 1365, but it stopped there at the 14, and then it ran up, and so it created a little resistance right there around 1549. But what I liked about the earnings was that they were positive. Last earnings they had, they were very negative. They had like an eight million dollar loss, and but this time, I guess they put might have put that in their books all at once. But this time they were actually positive with their earnings. So I, you know, I was telling Miss Vegas this is going to be my twenty dollar target again on on Cron when it starts to bounce up, in which we can see right now it has started to do that. We did have a week where it kind of pulled back a little bit and hit that low fourteen. 45 support level that $15 level and then I'm going to draw a little trend line right down here right around the 1471 just in case it wants to pull back to that but right now the low support on Cron as we speak right now is going to be at 1550 1549 to 1550 it could stop at 60 but that's going to be your low support now we have a 1571 and these are just from the previous run that we had when it ran 20 days ago up to 17 so that's not nothing, you know, I, I, I'd spank a fly with because I think it can go up here to around 1750 again and hit my $20 target probably in another month or so. But I was very excited about the earnings. So that was my catalyst for it to start to retrace and start to rebound. And I did call this trade when it was down at 6 bucks all the way to $20. Once it hit the 10 I was pretty strong about it hitting 20 and it did do that. And I'll show that in a yearly chart how, how sweet this was called it right down here right around the six dollar area and it did run up one time and then pulled back it got that news about rolling up cigarettes with Marlboro and then she went ahead now, that was the company right the white yeah. Pants, yeah and then when it pulled back to about the 645 level it was a real strong buy and I mentioned that in the room also and it did hit my $20 target plus some. Everything beyond that was a gift. And then they tried to short this trade and it, it just couldn't, they just couldn't get away with it. And it bounced back up and almost made another double top. Well, now she's pulled back here for about two months and we hit that 200 SMA or the 200 EMA. This is an EMA and this is a 34 EMA. I'm using on a yearly daily chart. It did pull back and hit that 200 EMA at 14 bucks, and then now we're smacked up into the 34. So we could see some consolidation here, but our next resistance is going to be around that 17, 1750 area. And if we can break that, we're going to go bring her back up to 20. And I'm pretty solid about that $20 target. This is going to be Cron. Keep your eyes out on it. It's one of my favorites. It kind of was sour there a little bit because of the earnings that they came out with. Not the last one, the, the previous one, but this last earnings report, I just loved it because it was actually in the green, and that's a, that's a positive. And then we're going to talk about one today um, for weight loss. That's OBLN, and I think everybody in the country was playing this today. Well, you know, I just want to mention one thing, though, about... OBLN. So OBLN is also located in San Diego. And, you know, um, last Friday, they got a delisting notification letter from NASDAQ. And they actually have received two notices from NASDAQ Ooh. confirming that the company was no longer in compliance with the listing rules. And that, um, you know, they, uh, based on whatever they, their, um, quarterly, their quarterly report, they were not in compliance based on the 10Q for the period ending March 31st. And uh, by the way, the stockholder equity was 6.518 million, which is below the 10 million in stockholder equity required for continued listing. So uh, what happened is they got a second notice from the company telling them that the closing bid price for their stock had been below a dollar for the last 30 days and that the company therefore was not in compliance. And uh, the company had 45 days, basically until July 1st, to submit a compliance plan and then after that if they accept it obviously they're granted an extension well you know what thank goodness they got some news because you know what that has helped oh, bring up the time. stock so here was the news so the news was um that obln uh which is they're into you know they have uh, medical technology they got the first and only fda approved what they call it's a swallable gas filled intragastric balloon system 
for the treatment of obesity, and it announced that the expanded clinical data from the com uh, large-scale commercial use study was presented at a conference uh, that was held in San Diego, a conference called DDW, which stands for Digestive Disease Week. And um, they had 1,411 patients uh, that went through this, and they were treated with a swallowable gas-filled intragastric balloon system for six months. And results from this registry continue to demonstrate uh, the real world utility of the balloon system with weight loss and safety results from 143 treatment sites in the US. Um, they basically did mention that the weight with people that did receive the balloon uh, for th um, over a six month uh, therapy was about 21.7 pounds, which apparently was a 10.2% reduction in total body weight. And of note, 50.7% of the patients lost less than 10% total body weight. So um, that's quite interesting. Now, the Obalon Balloon Registry is the largest endoscopic bariatric therapy registry in the U.S. And um, I think this is great because right now they have to treat this with surgery. Um, so I think the fact that you can just like swallow a pill, I mean, I think this is a really interesting technology. Um, so that's great that they got the FDA approval for the swallowable gas-filled intragastric balloon system. And you know what? There was a lot of block trades on this stock weeks ago. And uh, that was noted here. And some people took it as a swing. Some people took it as a day trade. But you know what? This had a nice move today. And uh, pre-market in the morning, I mean, this stock traded uh, just yesterday. It closed at 38 and a half cents. Can you believe that? And today it went as high as $1.64. So talk about timing of being into a stock based on news. Wow, that was just incredible. And Jim was like on this all day, scalping this thing all day. Um, and right now, I mean, I am watching the stock. It looks like it wants to do a double tap break. But, Jim, let's hear what you, how you traded this and what you see on the stock. Well, like you said, Wednesday, I mean, Monday, this thing was down at a, at a uh, yearly low at 37 cents. And, I mean, I, I sat there and, and at first, you know, I, wasn't, I found a few trades to get in and out of. And then I spotted this one and I said, this is going to be my trade of the day. And I noticed on the yearly, I've watched this before. I'm going to pull up a three-year chart on this thing. These yellow lines are from three years ago. We had a three-year high on this at 1588, and it's pulled all the way back here to 37 cents. And we did fill the gap today, which we needed to fill right around the 140 something area. So I'm going to pull up the three month. This area right in here, right at 143, that's where the gap needed to be filled, and we needed to break a resistance of 61. And that's what happened today. Once we broke that, I mean, it popped right out of the gate right out of the gate it just popped on up and right then I knew that this could be either a, sh a well shorted stock or one that could go ahead and carry its weight all throughout the day usually when I see a big gap on this like this it'll run and then it'll pull back and maybe have a little bit of re retracement bounce on this but I called this sucker at 86 cents today I didn't get in it at 86 cents but let me pull up the daily 20 let me yeah we just need to look at the day and here we was right here, right first thing this morning when it started hitting the bottom and it ran up to 95, that's when I started noticing this. And then we had what you would call almost a ascending triangle where it, uh, you had a higher, not ascending, but maybe a uh, pennant flag kind of like where you had higher lows and lower highs. And then once it met in the middle right here, we had the big three white soldiers that came up on a three minute chart. And once them three white soldiers came in, it kind of consolidated. And then right here, it pulled all the way back to that support level again at 86 cents. And that's where I started scalping it at today. Plus, I did scalp it up in here a few times. And But once that big sell-off started to come in, I'm going to pull up the daily one minute. This is the chart I was reading today. I could tell that the 34 EMA started dropping. And once that started to drop and crossed over the 200, that was time for me to go ahead and get out of it, but I did get out a little bit sooner, around 124.
took a small little loss on my, about my third little scalp on this trade. And then I waited for it to do its thing. And once I seen it hit this support line that I had from pre-market at 86 cents, I jumped in it at 87. And I ran it all the way up. And I scalped it probably five or six times in this little channel right here. And then boom, man. The thing jumped up and I got out right around the 104, maybe 112 if I remember right. Somewhere right around the one, no, it was, yeah, it was right around in here is where I scalped it and got out. And then, bam, it just ran all the way up to 164. I got in it again, scalped it, then right into close, took that big knife, and I scalped it probably about 10 minutes before the close came in. And then, bam, here we are almost with a double top. We do have a uh, a, a triangle that's working on here, a wedge, and we did have a previous high after hours of 162. It did pull back to around 134, so I'm definitely going to be watching this tomorrow before I head out on vacation. We did almost pull back to that 200 EMA, and these are the two uh, patterns that I did a case study last week on the 34 EMA, the 50, and the 200. And I felt like the 34 and the 200 were my favorites right now in the EMA section. Plus, I used the 9, of course. And then on the SMAs, I used the 20, the 10, the 20, the 100, the 50, the 100, and the 200 on a different chart. Plus, I also use the VWAP, which I have right here. You know, I keep a good eye on it, too, for pullbacks after one breaks out. Or maybe in early in the morning get off on the third line VWAP and ride it all the way up to the top of the third but then always count on it pulling back to the middle so I have many arsenals that I use and I also study chart patterns so right now we're gonna call support level right around the 134 137 area that's where it pulled back earlier after hours we also come close to hitting that 200 right here at 126 125 I'm gonna keep this on good while I'm not in the trade right now I sold it right into close, but um, this is one that I'm going to keep on watch tomorrow. And if we get another, I don't think the shorts are available in this trade either. So, no, there's no shorts available to short. Yeah. No shares available. <laughs> I meant no shares available to shorts tomorrow. Sure, everybody wears short shorts. Yeah. So, 134, that's where I want it to stay. If it pulls back, we can hit maybe down here to the 117 area or the 106. The 106 is going to be real solid. I don't want to see it go below a dollar again. I like to see that delisting letter to be out of sight. And that's OBLN and that concludes our little aftermarket report. We talked about Tesla, Cron, OBLN and also I want to mention that we do have a one week trial in our chat room. I love stocks. If you go to our chat room or to our website, ilovestocks.com, I-L-U-V-S-T-O-C-K-S. Hit the chat room right here, and then this is where you sign up for that for that, uh, for that that trial. And we also have a Twitter page that you can hook up. Link to us there. Follow us there. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that bell for future updates and also we have stock twits most vegas and my stock twits are on here please sign up there we have pintergeist we have facebook our youtube channel if you want to write us a letter you can do that too this is i love stocks and miss vegas you got anything you want to throw in no i just want to wish everyone a very nice long weekend a long weekend you know it's memorial day so um, everyone's off for the long weekend. Jim's off. I'm off. Everyone's off. Everyone's going to enjoy the long weekend. And it's nice to take a break from the markets and uh, hopefully definitely come back refreshed on Tuesday. So we will not have a market report this weekend. Um, I think everyone deserves a time off to relax and come back recharged. So um, on that note, I hope everyone takes advantage of the time off. You know, if you don't have any major plans, you know what? Sometimes it's good to take some time to study and plan trades for the next day that you may, you may like. Um, there's nothing wrong with studying. I mean, it's to your benefit. But at the end of the day, you know what? It is a long weekend. So, of course, enjoy. Spend time with your family and uh, your friends and with, you know, even your alone time on your own. It's nice to unwind and just disconnect. I mean, don't even like sometimes just leave your phone alone. 
for several hours, don't even check messages and just chill out and enjoy quality time with the people that matter most in your life. So I want to wish you all a great long weekend. Have a great weekend. Have a great time. And uh, we will see you guys and girls all on Tuesday. Speaking Take of the, care. Speaking of the ladies, International Women's Day is every day at I Love Stocks. So if you ladies out there want to join to our, our chat room, you get a whole free month. Just make sure you message Vegas and let her know that you're new to the room. And, you know, we, we really appreciate the ladies out there. They, they, they benefit all traders. I look up to them, especially more than probably guys. And that's just the way it is. I've been trading around the ladies for a long time. So this is I Love Stocks. This is May the 22nd, 2019, and enjoy the weekend, and we'll come back. We won't be in a report tomorrow or, like Miss Vegas said, on Sunday, but we'll be back here Tuesday night to give you an aftermarket report and update. And we love stocks.